Hello, thank you all for coming. I'm Michelle Brown. I'm co-owner of Teaism, and we're in our third year of organizing this event in support of Food Day. I'd like to recognize and thank um, the organizing committee, our sponsors, and our distinguished panel for taking time to come here today. Thank you all. Um, I don't really know how I ended up here. Um, after decades of working in the restaurant business, there's one thing I know, and that is that our chefs um, are charged with a daunting task. Um, their jobs require a huge commitment, physical endurance, intellect, artistry, patience, persistence, problem solving, and perhaps a little lunacy. <laughs> Our chefs in D.C. are feeding um, this country's policymakers, and we have their ears and their stomachs. And if we, as a community, could get on the same page with some of these most pressing issues, I think that we could move the bar. Our hope is that this event will give you all a chance um, to pause in the midst of your busy schedules, to reflect, to learn something new, and then we'll turn that understanding into some action. Looking back, my generation grossly neglected the food supply in America. Processed foods for mass consumption exploded, and on some level, everything just got too easy and convenient. The result has been obesity, diabetes, monocultures of little understood GMOs, massive pollution in our waterways, dead soil, die-offs of birds and bees, shrinking diversity of seeds, and the list is endless. And our government is hardly responding and these are now our children's problems. I don't want to sound pessimistic, I'm not. We're at the epicenter of affecting change and there are brilliant people working on food issues. If you just look at this panel, you can, you can tell. So I want to introduce our moderator, Eric McKinney. He's a young, talented chef who's built his foundation, working for many of our city's best, now he'll have to be part of the solution, and he is stepping up today to take part in the conversation. Thank you all. Hi. Uh, public speaking, I'm new to that. Um, I've actually never even been to one of these types of events, so it's nice to uh, start here, I guess. Um, I've been a chef in D.C. for, in the D.C. area for about 15 years. Um, grew up in Virginia and uh, wound up in the restaurant industry by mistake and just stayed with it because I loved it. Uh, always loved the idea of doing something with my hands. Thought I would be a carpenter. Um, I'm not good at carpentry. I'm very good in the kitchen though, so I, uh, I lucked out. Um, I don't know that much about what we're going to talk about today but I know more than a lot of the chefs that I work with. Uh, there's just that much to know about what we're gonna talk about today. Um, I think the education of chefs and cooks in this city is important on things like this. It's as important as it is for the diners to be educated. Uh, we, can be, we can do everything we can in the kitchen to be educated and put out the type of food that we should be eating, but if the diners aren't educated as well, then uh, you know, we're kind of doing it for nothing so we can understand what we're coming from. Um, diversity, I think, is a big, big issue for, for everything. Vegetables, meats, produce. People are used to using, you know, certain cuts of certain things, certain species of certain things. Like, they don't want to use, they don't use all of something. Uh, where I work right now, we actually bring in a whole cow every two weeks. Uh, about 400 pounds dressed weight. It's difficult because you know people buy up the wine shops, they buy up the tender ones, they buy up you know anything that's recognizable. But you know, with our charcuterie program, like we've been able to introduce people to you know more traditional preparations like tete de veau, like making the head cheese. It's difficult to get people in DC to eat things like that. You have to kind of paint a prettier picture for them than what it actually is. Um, even with vegetables, a lot of people aren't big vegetable eaters, they like potatoes, they like heirloom tomatoes, they like things that are comforting, not things that necessarily stretch uh, what one thinks of when they think of vegetables, or even using the different parts. Uh, 
all the kitchens I've, most of the kitchens I've worked in when I was young, like beautiful beets came in with beautiful greens, and the greens went to trash. Uh, where I'm at now, I, I save those, I cook those. The stems pick beautifully, same thing with Swiss chard. Like, things that people usually throw away from like both the animal and from vegetable can both, they can be utilized and, you know, eaten deliciously if you think about it, do a little bit of research on what you're doing. Um, a lot of it, too, is getting people to maybe pay a little bit more money than they're used to paying for something. The, the big commodity farmers, whether they're raising animals or vegetables, can charge a lot less than what the hard-working local farmers can for a similar product, at least seemingly to the consumer. One thing I, I've thought of as a chef is it's really easy to get local stuff at small restaurants or sustainable objects at small restaurants if you know the purveyors, if you know the local guys you can get from. Uh, the local, like the mainline purveyors, it's difficult. It, a lot of them will just sell, they want to get in the best price so they can beat the price of the other company. So they will bring in, you know, just, they don't have a lot of local, uh, they don't have a lot of sustainable uh, options. Uh, so one thing as a chef, I'd like to, uh, like, I would love to see, uh, we have the farmer co-ops in Pennsylvania, like Amish uh, country. Those are great, uh, but Virginia and Maryland are very underrepresented with those sorts of things. We had one uh, based out of, I uh, um, uh, think down in Rappahannock County area, uh, the Fresh Link I used for years. Unfortunately, they stopped uh, this year to focus on other um, family business things. So. You know, farmer, it's it's great to meet farmers like Casey, uh, who you know grow locally, and I can try to develop relationships with them because, as chefs, we're very busy in the kitchen. It's difficult to to develop personal relationships with people versus uh, company relationships. <coughs> company relationships take you know two emails and you're locked in. Personal relationships are you know it's difficult. You have to make the time meet people in person. So that's something that I've try to make as much time as I can for. And as I get older and I have family and all of that, like it, your time becomes precious and it's a lot less. Uh, one thing I think that would be very helpful too is understanding how difficult farm work really is. I've helped out on a farm a couple of times. And after doing so, I told him he undercharge by a ridiculous amount. Of right. I, I worked out in the field for a couple days. His manure spreader was broken down, so my wife slowly drove down the field in the pickup truck while I just shoveled manure off the back of the truck. I did that for like 12 hours. That's, you know, that's just one day on the farm. You know, being crouched down in the hot sun, popping, you know, potatoes and onions in the ground. Like, there's a, there's a lot of hard work that people don't understand. That's why I freak out if I see cooks drop something on the ground and throw it in the trash. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't think like, oh, that green bean fell on the floor, it's trash. Like, no, you wash it. Like, it's not, <laughs> it's not trash. Uh, so just that kind of, that understanding. Uh, people definitely romanticize the culinary industry. I think they romanticize the farming industry, too. They think being a farmer is about sitting on the porch, drinking lemonade, watching the tomatoes glisten in the sun. <laughs> like, it's, it's not like that. I've never seen any of my farmer friends do anything like that. Um, yeah, that's that's basically my my roundabout, you know, my background and my small background in the farming and agricultural uh, industry as a chef. Um, I'm really happy to be here today to be able to learn a lot more than I already know and to meet some people that you know, can help me and, you know, people that I work with and my customers grow too.